Hello, I'm Dynasty the Mirror. Our new developments in the Bankhead neighborhood with homes priced at a half a million dollars, and they are sparking a lot of talk about the pace of gentrification in Atlanta and how it is at warp factor speed right now. Yeah, for decades, communities on the west side like English Avenue and Vine City have raised concerns about affordability. Naima Abdullahi taking a closer look. The 1029 West development being constructed on Donnelly Hollowell Parkway in Bankhead is going for about $500,000 per town home. The developer, Brock Built Homes, is building 61 units right near where Microsoft is expanding and building a 90-acre new business campus. All of this in a neighborhood where the median household income is about $37,000 according to the census. But if you don't have a certain amount of money, you're not going to be able to live in the city. Longtime Atlanta resident Carrie Salvary says this is an indication of the downside to gentrification. I really do believe that someone in our city is looking to have a different kind of people uh, to live in our city, a different level of income people to live in our city. Atlanta City Council member Antonio Brown, who represents the West Side's District 3, says more accountability is needed to preserve and protect neighborhoods. We have to ensure we're holding developers accountable for being inclusive, especially when coming into low-income black and brown communities. Two years ago, we covered how townhomes in Bankhead were going for the low 400s. Now it's in the 500s. The median home price in Metro Atlanta is about $390,000, according to real estate companies. As new construction to prices across the country soaring from groceries to cars. Our chief economics correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, is here with that for this morning. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning, Michael. And Americans are feeling this. The highest inflation we've seen in this country in nearly 40 years, with prices up 7.5% in the last 12 months. This morning, inflation up. Since December 2020, the price of a pound of bacon rising more than a dollar, a dozen eggs up 21%, and a sirloin steak up a whopping $2 a pound. Goldman Sachs economists estimating those food prices could jump another 5 to 6% this year. But it's not just the grocery bill eating into family budgets. Nationwide, gas prices are up 50% from last year. Plus, the average price of a new car, a record-breaking $47,077, nearly $6,000 more than a year ago, with 82% of new vehicle purchases above the suggested retail price, according to Edmonds. Okay, everyone, so I am here showing my client a home, and I just want you to take a look at all of the people who are lined up to see this property. So when we say that there is a housing crisis, we really, really mean it. It's absolutely insane. The line goes all the way in the back. It's not even 530 fully. And someone stopped me and they wanted to know what was going on in the neighborhood. And I just told them the truth. I said, we're having a housing crisis. And this is a home that is priced under $300,000 here in the Raleigh area. And as you can see, there are just cars upon cars upon cars. And there are a ton of people that are trying to see this home. This is absolutely ridiculous. We have got to get control over these prices and the housing inventory. Absolutely crazy. So, and people are so desperate for a home, you know, under a particular price point because people don't make as much money. But there's a lot of, a lot, there's just a lot of people out here. This is, this is just absolutely insane. Like I said, I had some people pull, um, pull over while I was walking up to the property just to talk to me about what was going on here. All right, just wanted to share. All right, y'all take care. Have a great night. Bye. Dad? Yeah. If... 
Africans are coming over here where we are to get more opportunities. Why would we go back to Africa where they left for lack of opportunities? Um, that's actually a pretty okay question coming from you because you're only like 13. Um, basically, when Africans leave their country, right, mm -hmm. and come to America, what do they come here for? Money. Right. Yeah. And when they get that money, nine times out of ten, what do they do with that money? Send it back to Africa. Right. To, like, help their families, maybe invest in a business. When you went to Africa, did you did you see there were businesses and everything yeah. like that? Yeah, there were a lot. And who owned those businesses? African people. Right. So, Africans come to America just like every other racial group. Cambodians, Mexicans, everything like that, right? Mm -hmm. To get money. Then they send that money back to their country to build wealth for themselves. So if we're already in America and we're doing what we're supposed to do, what should we already have? Money. So it's kind of like we got a head start on the Africans, right? Mm -hmm. We don't got to cross the water to have access to this money, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So doesn't it make sense that we do the same thing to generate wealth for ourselves that they do once they get over here and make money. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so um, a lot of people have a lot of different viewpoints about that situation. And one of the things I say is there are white people from America investing in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. Um. There are Chinese people from China in Africa investing in Africa, right or wrong? Right. Okay. So why wouldn't we, who have a uh, a unprecedented level of access to money and wealth in America, mm -hmm. where everyone's coming, it's like we live, it's like we live, it's like say we're going to play a football game and we live in the stadium. Right, <laughs> we have like a home field advantage, mm -hmm. so we should be bet we should be better able to get the money and then make the money work for us in different locations than someone who has to like catch a flight or a boat to get here, get the money, then send it back. So we have less steps mm -hmm. to reach a similar goal. Does that does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I just I just so. Uh, Thank you for the question. Mm. I remember back in 2014 when I bought my house here in Atlanta. I bought it in a neighborhood called the West End. And I remember telling my friends, like, hey, I'm moving to the West End of Atlanta. They were giving me all types of warnings, disclaimers. Dinus is not safe. It's the trap. It's the hood. It's that. Is that is the other shootouts every night, drive-bys every night. Like they gave me every warning. But buying my house in the West End was the best financial decision I ever made. Now, leading up to buying my house in the West End, it wasn't necessarily an easy process. Yes, I was making very good money at the time working in corporate America. But the way they scrutinize my income even though I was a W-2 employee it wasn't easy to get this house even though I could afford it at the time when I bought this house it was $185,000 my house is probably tripled in value now here in the West End where I'm at now houses in Atlanta in Bankhead if you guys are familiar with Atlanta familiar with Bankhead Bankhead is the trap, is the hood, it was the hood, it was the trap. I mean, it was, is the, is the street that I guess T.I. was selling dope off of. Now, houses are going for $500,000. And I just sit back. I'm like, back when I was making six figures working for corporate America, and I barely got into my house for one eighty five. who in the hell could afford these houses for $500,000? And people are lining up 
putting in offers above asking price. So what am I getting at? Listen, ADOS, FBA is coming a point with inflation, housing shortages, the cost to buy a house, you're going to be priced out of America. It's happening right now. You're going to have to look outside of America to start building your legacy, start acquiring real estate, start acquiring homes. Because this is not going to end. I'm trying to tell you this is not going to end. Some people are like, well, Dinus, you know, the when the uh, uh, interest rates go up, you know, prices might go down a little bit. I don't think so. I mean, the reason why I say that is, and this is not financial advice, do your own research. There are too many institutional and retail players in this housing market now. So this idea that, look, I'm going to wait, I'm going to sit it out, interest rates go up, I might be able to buy something because, you know, the demand for homes will go down and prices will go down. I don't think so. You know, I tell people, you know, they say Atlanta's the black Mecca. I remember when I moved here and all these houses were bando houses. Like it was, there was probably like maybe three houses on my street that were actually renovating people living in the rest were bandos. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, Atlanta, black Mecca, black ownership. When it was time to renovate these houses, there'd be an old white man, in a pickup truck pulling up with Latinos in the back, getting ready to renovate this out, these houses. So with the housing prices going up, inflation going up, the majority of you who consider themselves ADOS, FBA, my bones are buried here in America. Our ancestors uh, uh, built this country. Um, how, how, how are you getting priced out of a country that, you, that your ancestors built? I mean, think about that. Whenever you bring that up, Whenever you want to throw that in somebody's face, my ancestors built this country. My bones are buried in this country. How are you getting the price out of a country that you built? That's why it's just what happened in the past is the past now. I mean, it's important. It should be recognized. But we in 2022 and we got to deal with the facts. Y'all are being priced out of America. Unless there's some ADOS FBA fund I don't know about. You know, there's some secret account, high interest account, if, if you know, high interest earning account, high yield account. You know, there's some uh, uh, secret. Uh, if you're ADOS FBA, you get a price cut on a home. Y'all being priced out of America. You're going to be forced to look outside of America for real estate because I'm not buying nothing else here. A house in Atlanta, not too far from me, over by Doug High School, just sold for a million dollars. Houses off of Bankhead are going 500000 But the ADOS FBA would have tell you that if you look at outside of America, you run it. <laughs> you run it. You scared because you want to invest outside of America. You scared. You run it. No, you have to be a fool to not look outside of America when inflation is going up, gas prices going up, and houses are going, going crazy. The housing market is crazy. It's not going to end. And this argument, well, the African immigrants are coming here. They're coming here to make their money and send it back home, the majority of them. The majority of them have homes, they have land back home. So they're making their money here to send it back home. Don't allow another people, don't allow another group of people to dictate what is in your best interest. You know, people who tell you not to look south of America to invest are similar to the people that were telling me, Dinus, don't buy your home in the West End. It's all emotional. It's all fear mongering. No facts. And I'm trying to tell you right now, as it sits right now, the way this is going here in America, unless you're making, because again, I was making low 100s. When I was in corporate America, bought my house for 185, barely had a little wiggle room where I got approved. I have no college debt. I had a car note at the, I have a car note. 
It's very, 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 very small credit card debt at the time. Still had a little wiggle room. So I'm like, if I had a little wiggle room to buy my house at 185, who's buying these houses at 500,000, 600,000? Who's buying them? And then everything's, and then even south side of Atlanta, east side of Atlanta, price is going up like crazy. This is all over America, y'all. Again, you're going to be forced to look outside of America. You're going to be forced to be a, uh, have an immigrant mindset where, hey, look, I need to look outside the borders of America to build my legacy. And again, this we built this country. We will share croppers. Uh, what's the other one? My bones are buried here. No one cares. I'm sorry. We got to move on. Right now, 2022, it, it, it just it doesn't mean anything. Because how can you brag about building a country, bones being buried in a, uh, in a country that you're being priced out of, that you don't control any of the resources, that uh, the developers will come into your neighborhood and build a $500,000 house and say, so what? Sell it, and then you're priced out. You're being priced out of the same communities that you yell to the rooftops that you built. That's an L. Until next time, family, Donna Samir, search for Uhuru. Shout out to Pan-Africanism Strikes Back. I use this video, and he's absolutely right. Use this money you're making here in America to build your legacy. And even if it's not Africa, look at Panama. Hell, look at Belize. I'm saying Africa, but again, ADOS is going to be forced to look outside the borders of America. Until next time, family, Donna Samir, search for Uhuru. Peace. I mean, even rents are going up. Rent is crazy here in Atlanta right now. The demand is crazy. This ain't, I could do a whole nother video on this, y'all. I'm going to do a whole nother video on this. How it's not the old Atlanta where, you know, you come, make 50K a year, uh, buy a house, 3,000 square foot house, sitting on an acre. Those days are over. This ain't the uh, old Atlanta where you can come and change your life and start over, start fresh. Nah, those days are over. Until next time, family, Dynasty Mirror, search for Huru. Thank <laughs> you.